In this video, we're going to show how the buffer action works. The idea is uh, to get a buffer solution, and then add a little bit of acid or base, and see that the pH changes very little, uh, much less than if you were to add the same acid or base to a solution that is not buffered. All right, so let's make a buffer solution by mixing uh, relatively large amounts of a weak acid and a salt of the conjugate base of that acid. Uh, the weak acid for this example is going to be hydrofluoric acid, HF, which has an equilibrium like this in water. H plus, plus fluoride. And the case of A is equal to 7.2, 10 to the minus 4. So clearly a weak acid. And uh, we're going to mix 0.1 molar of this um, uh, hydrofluoric acid solution with an equally uh, large concentration of a salt of the conjugate base. The conjugate base is fluoride, so we're going to use sodium fluoride as the uh, salt of that conjugate base, and that is going to give us sodium plus AQs and then uh, fluoride minus AQs. So that is your buffer solution. Notice that um, at equilibrium, once this is uh, reached, you're actually going to be having uh, the same amount of HF and fluoride, and those are going to be very similar to the initial concentrations, 0.1 molar. Okay? And again, that is the definition of, of a buffer. You need a weak acid, uh, the conjugate base of the acid, and both need to be in relatively large concentrations which for us is going to be 0.1 molar or higher. So we're clearly within the buffer action. The first thing that we're going to do is just uh, calculate what the pH of this uh, buffer solution is. Okay? Right. So to do that, uh, what you do is you set up a nice diagram for the acid dissociation process, H plus and fluoride minus. And the ice diagram is going to look like this. You have 0.1 molar, and then no protons, and then you also have 0.1 molar of the fluoride. Okay, the change is going to be minus x, x, and x, and that means that at equilibrium you're going to have 0.10 molar uh, minus x, x, and 0.10 molar plus x. We come to the equilibrium constant, and that is going to be equal to x multiplied by uh, 0.1 plus x, and then the concentration of hydrofluoric acid is 0.1 minus x, and that is equal to 7.2 10 to the minus 4. Okay, uh, we can uh, approximate here uh, this x to 0 compared to 0 0.1 because it will be a small volume. And then if we neglect this x with respect to 0 0.1 both in the denominator and the numerator, then what we get is something that looks like this. And those two factors cancel. And then you have that x is equal to uh, the concentration of protons is equal to k sub a. In this case, 7.2, 10 to the minus 4. You can clearly see that the, the approximation is valid because the value of x is uh, much less than 5% of the number that you're neglecting it against 0.1. Okay, so this is something important that happens in buffer solutions. It turns out that at equilibrium, the concentration of protons that you get is equal to uh, the k sub a of the acid. And we have seen this happening in the prior video with acetic acid, and we see it happening uh, now for hydrofluoric acid, so you see that it is general. Uh, and uh, you can generalize that as saying that, again, for a buffer solution, the pH is going to be equal to the pK sub A. Okay, so you take the base and logarithm of that, and for this particular example, this is going to be a pH of 0 0.3.14. Okay, that will be the pH of, of our buffer solution. That is that at equilibrium you have uh, so very little of uh, protons, so this x is so small, that for all intents and purposes, your uh, concentrations of the conjugate base and of the weak acid at equilibrium are identical to the initial ones, which is again something that we have demonstrated in a prior video. All right, so now let's try to see how the buffer action works. What we're going to do is add a base, a little bit of base to this uh, a solution that we have right here, and then see that the pH is going to change by very little. We expect that when we add a base, uh, the pH will become uh, a little larger, more basic. All right? The question is, well, by how much does the pH increase, and how does that increase in pH compare to adding the same, uh, uh, same, the same base 
base to a solution which is not a buffer, but will be a solution of a strong acid. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do then, uh, that addition. We're going to take uh, the following. We're going to just save this pH 3.14 as the initial for reference later. All right, so now we have a base. Okay, so we have uh, 1.00 liter of the buffer. And to this, we're going to add 0 0.01 mole of sodium hydroxide. Okay, that is, uh, that is what's what we're going to do. This sets up a stoichiometric reaction, a uh, typical uh, stoichiometric reaction where you have HF uh, plus NaOH to, uh, to give uh, water and sodium fluoride. Okay, uh, so we can uh, uh, try to see what, what's going to happen to this uh, buffer once we add a little bit of the base. So what will happen is going to be very obvious, right? Uh, this HF that you have right here uh, the hydroxide of uh, the base is going to make uh, this displaced towards the right. Okay, so you're going to have a little bit less uh, of the HF because it has been consumed by the base and a little more of the fluoride conjugate base because it has been generated as the HF is uh, shifted the, uh, uh, the shifted the system towards the right. Okay, and we're going to see that with numbers. Okay, in order to do these calculations we actually have to do a stoichiometry again and this requires use of moles. Okay, so uh, we're going to uh, kind of build a table here for HF and fluoride minus. And fluoride. And uh, we're going to simply write the moles before base. Then uh, the change when you add the base to those moles, and the moles after the base. Okay. So let's see what would be the moles of hydrofluoric acid uh, before the base. Well, we have a liter of the buffer, and then uh, the molar concentration of the buffer, notice that is 0 0.1 molar. Okay, that is uh, our initial setup. So you multiply this by the molarity, 0. Uh, one zero zero uh, molar, and then you get that the number of moles initially is zero point one zero zero, with three uh, significant figures. Okay, this will be the moles of HF initially, and the fluoride you would get exactly the same. Initially, you have zero point one hundred mole. All right, so let's see what happens when you add zero point zero uh, one zero zero mole of sodium hydroxide. But well, what that's going to mean is that uh, of the 0.1 mole, a tenth uh, of that 0.1 mole will react. Okay, so the change is going to be exactly the amount of base that you have added, which is 0.010 mole. Again, that what this means is simply that uh, you're going to consume an amount of acid identical to the amount of base that you're adding. That's a neutralization reaction. Okay, and then what that means is that well, if you because these two uh, species are bound by uh, this equilibrium. If uh, uh, this gets displaced to the right when you consume it with uh, the base, then you will be generating an equal amount of fluoride ions, right? So notice that fluoride ions will uh, grow by 0 0.0 uh, 100 mole, okay, which is the amount of base uh, added. And again, this is just because the base uh, tweaks with this equilibrium. You get uh, protons there, you add hydroxide, then you will comp completely neutralize that. And what that means is that, well, uh, you're shifting the system to the, uh, from the left to the right. This constant, this, the amount of moles of hydrofluoric acid will drop, and then subsequently, or consequently, the amount of fluoride ions will increase. Okay, by exactly this amount, which is the amount of base that you have added. Okay, so after the base, then what you have left over is uh, 0 0.9 sorry, 0 0.09, 0 mole, and then uh, fluoride, you'll have 0 0.0, 0 0.110 mole. Right, so that's exactly what we expect. Right? The amount of acid has been depleted by uh, the amount of base that you have added, and the amount of uh, the conjugate base has increased by a commensurate amount. Okay? Something that is important in these acid-base reactions is that when we add a strong base to this weak acid, 
we can assume that that acid base reaction goes to completion, right? So again, all of the base in this particular case is going to react with uh, the commensurate amount of the acid. All right, so now we actually have this uh, uh, number of moles after you, you add the base, and uh, we can recalculate what the pH would be uh, just by going to the equilibrium constant and drawing here an, a new ice diagram. Okay, so uh, let's repeat here what the ice diagram would be now. HF, H plus, and F minus. Okay, notice that now uh, your initial concentration of the acid, okay, these are moles, but we still have one liter. And we're going to be assuming that uh, the amount of volume, that ha the amount of volume change by adding the base is negligible. So you're still going to have one liter. That means that your con molar concentration of HF is going to be 0 0.09 molar. And the molar concentration of flora is going to be 0 0.110 molar. OK, so uh, this is how we can write now our ice diagram. Right, notice that now after you have added the base, the initial concentration of HF is 0 0.0. 90, uh, we're going to assume that there's no protons, and then, then the amount of um, fluoride is going to be equal to 0 0.11, uh, 0 molar. Okay, the change, minus x, 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 and then uh, at equilibrium you're going to have 0 0.090 minus x, x, and 0 0.11, 0 plus x. Okay, that is the new ice diagram that you get after you have tweaked with the concentrations for hydrofluoric acid and fluoride by the addition of the base. Clearly, this is going to change the pH. The question is by how much. All right, so let's uh, erase here all of the uh, base calculations to be able to calculate the new pH. All right, so um, notice that now you go back to your case obey and uh, try to solve for x. That's a concentration of protons. Then the concentration of fluoride is going to be 0. Point uh, 11, 0 plus x, and the concentration of the acid is 0 0.090 minus x. Okay, and this has to be equal to 7.2, 10 to the minus nine, uh, 4. All right, so much as before, what we can do is assume that x is going to be very small and neglected with respect to the 0 0.090 in the denominator, and then we can assume that the x is small compared to the 0 0.1100 there in the numerator. So then what you actually have left over is this, right? With, with, uh, and this gives you uh, more, con uh, more concentration of protons equal to uh, 5.89, 10 to the minus 4. All right, so clearly the concentration of protons has changed a little bit. When you calculate the pH of this, this now is equal to uh, 3.23. Okay, so the pH has changed from 3.14 before you add the base to 3.23 after you add a little bit of base, but that change doesn't seem very dramatic. It's only uh, uh, just a, a tenth of a pH unit. Okay, uh, well, we, we don't really don't know if that's a large change or a small change. That depends on the amount of base uh, that you have, but we can clearly see is that the change index is in the direction that we expect. Right, we have added base, but that means is that that solution should be less acidic than it was and it is. Now the true comparison to uh, illustrate what the buffer action re uh, really is, is to compare this change in the pH in the buffer solution to a similar change in pH uh, or, or to the change that would uh, occur if you add the same amount of base to a solution that is very similar to the buffer one but without any buffer action. Okay, so let's see how that would work. Suppose that we, we have one liter of a concentration of hydrochloric acid or a solution of hydrochloric acid, which has a molar concentration of 1.00 10 to the minus 3 molar. Okay? Notice that this is not a buffer because you have uh, a, a strong acid, and uh, you, can't, you can't do buffers with strong acids. You need a weak acid and the conjugate base, or a weak base and the conjugate acid. But notice that, again, none of those conditions are here, right? That's strong acid, and you actually don't have the conjugate uh, uh, anyway, right? So, uh, this is clearly not, not going to be a buffer solution. However, the pH of this solution is 3, right? which is very similar to the acidity that you had initially with your buffer solution. What we're going to do now is just uh, try to add the same amount of base to this uh, strong acid solution and see by how much the pH changes. All right, so uh, the reaction is going to be very simple. You have sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid to generate sodium chloride, 
and then water. And again, these are going to be now stoichiometric calculations, so we would like to do them in moles. Okay? All right, how many moles of base are, are we adding? Exactly the same amount as we added to the buffer. So that amount uh, that we're adding is 0 0.010 uh, mole. Right, how, are, how many moles of hydrochloric acid I have? Well, I can get those from uh, multiplying the uh, molarity times the volume, okay? And that is going to give me 0 0.001000 mole of HCl. Okay, so for HCl, I have here 0 0.001 Zero, 00 mole, okay, and that's the reaction that is going to happen. All right, so let's see what happens when you uh, react these two things. Notice that you have 10 times more base than you have moles of acid. What that means is that there's going to be quite a bit of, of base left over after the reaction. There's going to be an excess of base, right? And the excess is going to be just yes, what you had initially minus what gets consumed by the acid, right? So the uh, amount of base that you have left over is 0 0.00. 0 90 moles. Okay, that is the, your, your, uh, what happens at the end of the reaction. So this is very interesting. We had a strong acid with a pH of 3, but now we add a little bit of base, and it turns out that uh, uh, because base is an excess, then you'll have a basic solution. As a matter of fact, we can calculate what the pH of this resulting uh, solution would be, because we have the most of base left over. There's no acid left over, there's only base left over. We have the volume, which is one liter, and, and probably that's not hasn't changed much, but yes, adding a little bit of base, right? So notice that uh, here, you will have a, a concentration of hydroxide of base equal to 0 0.0019 molar. And from here, you can calculate what the pH is. First, you take the base, the logarithm of that, change the sign, and uh, this is a pOH of 2.05, and that means that the pH of that resulting solution is equal to uh, 11.95. Okay, so notice how shocking this is. We start from a solution of a strong acid, pH 3, we add a tiny little bit of base, and we change the pH to almost 12. That is uh, a change in uh, nine pH units, but because those are in a logarithmic scale, this is a change of nine orders of magnitude. You have one billion less smaller concentration of acid after adding the base uh, uh, than you had initially. Okay, and notice how dramatic this is when you compare it to the buffer solution. In the buffer solution, when we add exactly the same amount of, of base, only 0 0.010 mole. The pH only changes from 314 to 323. If you don't have a base, uh, a buffer solution, but you have a solution of a strong acid of approximately the same initial pH, the change in pH for the same amount of base is, is much more dramatic. Okay, so that tells you exactly what the power of a buffer solution is, and that is that it resists changes uh, uh, of pH quite well upon the addition of base, as we have seen in this problem, Okay, uh, and it will also resist them upon the addition of an acid. Okay, so hopefully this uh, uh, example has illustrated how the buffer uh, action works and, and how to compare it to a solution that is not a buffer.